I'm gonna teach you why athletes need to chase the pump. And we're gonna start, right? Nah. First, let's get into what it means to chase the pump. Or in that white coat terminology, that sciencey terminology, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. So do a lot of reps that will bring in a lot of fluid into the muscle cell. That is called chasing the pump. That's the feeling of being swole. So let's say you do 15 to 20 reps of a press, all of a sudden your body will bring in that sarcoplasm into the muscle cell that gives you the pump. That can lead to multiple forms of hypertrophy. Okay, so we're gonna have that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy that's feeling swole, that's giving you the pump. Let's think about here again, one other example. You get on a leg press or a leg extension. Leg extension's a really easy one to think about. Okay, you do a set of 30 to 35, you rest for 45 to 60 seconds, and you do another set of 30. Your quads will feel as though they have grown. That's the pump. That is fluid getting into the muscular cell and expanding that cell membrane. Okay, that's the sarcoplasmic pump. Now, myofibular hypertrophy. This is gonna come more in the sense of, let's say we're doing like seven doubles or seven sets of five or even 10 sets of four, something like that, where you're just constantly loading a large amount of weight on your back or on your muscles and you're just increasing that mechanical tension set over set over set over set. This is something that's seen a lot in Olympic weightlifters, a lot in powerlifters, a lot in athletes that tend to be in a specific weight class, is that you can actually think about putting a circle here, okay, and you put 10 straws in. And after you have that circle here, if you do, let's say, 10 sets of four, instead of having 10 straws in there, that myofibrillar hypertrophy would be, okay, now you have 15 straws, and those straws are an example of the myofibrils. That's gonna lead to a lot of strength. Now, now the next form of hypertrophy would be tendon hypertrophy. So this might happen from doing a lot of plyometric work. This happens from doing a lot of load-bearing exercise, resistance-based training. This can happen from myofibrillar-type training, sarcoplasmic-type training, sprinting, anything along those lines, okay? We're gonna see an increase in the size of the tendons and the collagen around those specific joints. So that's gonna help improve your rate of coordination. It's gonna help improve the structural integrity of your body. So this takes us into blood-based hypertrophy, okay? This is where we can think about if I go out and I run two, three, four hours, what ends up happening is I will actually generate more blood volume. So if I have more blood volume in my body, now I'm gonna have a lower resting heart rate typically because I can transfer or I can transport oxygen to then execute that ATP process. I don't need as much pumping every single minute because I have more blood volume. So it's not the standard form of hypertrophy, but this does indeed happen, especially with longer sessions of training. Now, that final aspect of hypertrophy would be myelination, okay? So this is when we see a myelin sheath actually form around the nervous system, around the nerves, around the axons of neurons to help transport our brain waves or our signals faster to then signal for faster rates of coordination. Okay, so typically when we're chasing the pump, we're gonna see sarcoplasmic. Okay, when we're trying to go really heavy, we're gonna see myofibrillar hypertrophy. Tendon and collagen-based hypertrophy will happen from jumps, from lifting uh, with sarcoplasmic and myofibrillar work. Blood hypertrophy happens with longer, slow distance over a very long period of time. Myelination will typically happen with plyometrics, uh, technical coordination movements like a snatch or any other weightlifting derivatives. But when it comes to chasing the pump for athletes, we need to trigger DBAP. So with novice lifters, they have to DBAP it, okay? And the big thing here where you're gonna see a lot of improvement is that you'll see with younger kids, okay? They don't really tolerate discomfort well. So what they tend to do is their motor patterns will sort of be all wonky. They'll do something like a dumbbell press. They'll be rocking back and forth. And then when things start to get hard, they'll flail like this and they'll be all over the place, okay? But if we can use sarcoplasmic hypertrophy effectively, we can take these kids to meet the swole therapist or the swole doctor. And in this case, they can do four sets of 17. They have to keep their feet down, especially if they're doing a bench press. They have to focus on controlling that pattern on the eccentric. They have to focus on just feeling that crazy pump, feeling that burn and embracing that. Getting out of homeostasis is okay. And that's one of the biggest aspects of DBAP for younger novice lifters. Now, I'm gonna get a couple more reps. If we're looking at athletes specifically, 
there's a couple other methods that we can use to help improve athletic performance. One, already we said, you know, four sets of 17. That will improve neural coordination in a novice athlete. The other aspect of using really high reps is that we can find lagging areas or problem areas for specific sports. So let's take basketball, for example. You might have some consistent ankle injuries. One of the issues around ankle injuries is that your ankles don't get a ton of blood flow in comparison to say your glutes, or your triceps or your pecs, okay? So it's a little bit harder to recover. If we can strengthen them with an exercise like a tibialis curl, okay? And let's say we do like four sets of 25, we're gonna get a crazy pump all throughout here and that's going to lead to improving the functionality of our ankle. And one key attribute of a really good strength training program is to have really good accessories in it, just like peak strength. And the cool part here is that you can do tibialis curls through a shorter range of motion. You can do it through a longer range of motion. You can superset it with calf raises and do sets of 17 to 25 reps. And when you're following a periodized program, let's say in peak strength, if you go in and you're a basketball player, you select basketball, now all of a sudden, you're gonna get accessories like this to try and improve your overall performance. And you can even look at other athletes like weightlifters, powerlifters, even football players. They might have common injuries in their lower back. So with lower back issues, one common thing you'll see inside of peak strength are those high rep sarcoplasmic reverse hypers. And you might even have other common accessories or other areas in specific sports that have those common injuries. Let's think about knee issues. So inside Peak Strength, if you're in a sport that does have more knee issues, you might see something like Spanish squats programmed a bit more, or even heavy sled drags where you're pulling backwards, trying to really blow up the quads. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. You can download Peak Strength. You're gonna get five free workouts and you can select which sport you wanna train for. After you start training, those five free workouts, along with those specific accessories, are gonna lead to some more sports performance gains. But that's not all that we need if we wanna keep chasing the pump as an athlete. So think about lagging body parts in the realm of sports performance. This is gonna take us to one of my favorite all-time books, one of the oldest books that I've got, meaning I've owned this for the longest, I believe since I was in college. Now, this takes us to the points of flexion approach to explosive muscle growth. And so what that means is that if we have an individual, let's take for example, okay, let's say we have a male swimmer, they need to hit a 90 pound dead hang pull up for two to three reps. So that's really, really freaking strong. So this is an advanced swimmer. In this case, as they build over time, we can start to look at their motor pattern and we can start to see how they actually move on the pull-up. And it might be a traditional pull-up, it might be a chin-up, it might be a neutral grip, it might be a high ring. And then as we work through a long period of time, we can see that their lagging muscle, okay, on this exercise isn't the lat, but instead it might be the bicep. So lat strength is key, especially if we're talking about a pull-up or a chin-up. But if our biceps are really, really weak, in turn, we won't be able to finish that chin-up or that pull-up with 90 pounds. So one thing that we can do is target that lagging muscle with a specific angle or a specific point of flexion. And in this case, let's take a preacher curl. And let's use sarcoplasmic gain. So we sit there and we'll go like 15 to 25 reps. So then we can rest for about a minute to a minute and a half and then go hit a chin up. What this does is it will lead to stronger biceps, which will help us achieve that goal of hitting those chin ups. So we use that isolation exercise, which I can feel a massive pump right now, even though my arms look really small, to try to increase coordination and then hit this again. Boom. But we still need more reasons for why athletes should be chasing the pump. And I'm gonna give you a really cool example here regarding wrestling, okay? So a lot of wrestlers don't like to lift a ton of weights. Sometimes they get a little hesitant, but there's certain scenarios where it pays off tremendously. And there's gonna be one specific scenario with chasing the pump where it can be very, very positive. Tanner Sloan, two-time All-American NCAA finalist last year as a 197 pounder. 
So he wrestles for South Dakota State. He has graduated and he's moved on. His weight class is vacant. So some of these lighter athletes that might be a 165 pounder, they might be a 174 pounder, they have to gain a serious amount of global muscle mass. So if they gain a serious amount of global muscle mass, now they can fulfill that weight class. They can walk around at like 205 to 210, maybe even a little bit heavier, and then cut down to 197 if they can gain that needed muscle mass. So one thing that they need to be doing now is at least twice a week, chasing the pump regularly. Especially in the off season, they can use some type of resistance-based training that is going to be really dialed in around chasing the pump. And this in turn, likely will lead to more muscle mass. And then as they get closer to the season, their weight will be much higher than it would have been if they were down at 165 or down at 174. And this is because they're doing more work in the rep ranges needed for chasing the pump. Now, there's also some other specific reasons for athletes to chase the pump. And some of these reasons aren't as well researched. They're not as studied inside the lab, but instead they're studied by those mad scientists in the weight room. So what is it? It's the mind-muscle connection developed by chasing the pump. And this is something that you can use to help coordinate your muscles a little bit more effectively. This is something that less athletic individuals in the weight room can use to start to feel that connection to their actual muscles. So let's take an example here on site. We've got an athlete named Derek. He wants to bench press 405. So right now he's a junior in high school. He just PR'd his bench around, I think it was around 365, if I remember correctly. In Derek's case, when you see him at max attempt, you can tell that he lacks a large amount of coordination in his shoulders and in his upper back. So one thing that we can do is we can use specific variations and specific rep schemes that tend to be higher rep ranges and give him that cue to focus on packing his lats, to focus on using his shoulders a little bit more as a shelf in his upper back. If we can do this over a long period of time with those longer rep ranges, all of a sudden he can have a little bit of like pre-fatigue and it's gonna help him coordinate more effectively. And ultimately over a long period of time, let's say the next four to six months, ideally he benches 405. And remember, you can get that periodized strength program. This is gonna be a program that Derek uses for four to five to six months to try and hit that 405. Just head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. You can download Peak Strength today so that you can get those gains. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.